moral sacrifice was very important. And I'm just amazed again at how people don't have a sense of enough today. And I don't want to begrudge anybody their first or second million or billion if there are no hungry children and if there are no homeless children and if children are being given the education in their own child that they need to survive and if children are safe. Um, and that's important not just because it's the right thing to do for those of us who um, whose faith tell us that every child is sacred, but because it's the sensible thing to do and the common sense thing to do. Now, anybody who hears me hears me quote Dietrich Bonhoeffer um, in almost every speech, um, who was a great Protestant German theologian who died opposing Hitler's Holocaust. And he believed that the test of the morality of society is how it treats its children. And we have been so blessed in this country, and yet we formed bottom of this test every hour of every day. And I say these things over and over again, and these are the greatest threat to America's national security, to America's values, to America's ability to compete in the new um, global arena, and in the century of any. Um, and while we worry a lot about external threats, and we spend trillions on the military, the death of this country's valleys and of this country's future lies in this, and that's why we've got to have that children's movement. We've got to have it. We have to have it. But listen to this, and how can this be? I thought I would be out of jobs. As I say, I thought we would have told everybody the truth about the conditions of children, told them it would cost less to prevent these problems than to pay for them after the fact. Um, and I would have been out of business 30 years ago. Well, it was all very nice. We get on the front page for one day, and then you go back to doing business as usual, which is why we have to have a movement. And we've made progress. There are lots of laws in the book that I'm very proud of, and we've got a long way to go, and we're now on the verge of moving backwards. So just listen to these facts. And I won't give you the New York State ones. You know those better than I do, but these are national facts. These are children of all race and income groups. And I ask myself how this can be in the richest nation on earth that pretends to be the leading democratic voice in the world. Every 11 seconds, one of our children drops out of school. The majority of all children of all races cannot read or compute at grade level. In fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade, they have already dropped out of school by twelfth grade, and we know that half the children in many of our schools are dropping out before twelfth grade. What is a child going to do in this competitive, globalizing, post-industrial economy if they cannot read? They're being sentenced to economic and economic death. You can't function. You used to be able to have we grew up in the South, we had shotgun weddings. You got your girl pregnant, you would force you to marry, and you could go off to the military, or farm your patch of land. Um, you could somehow find a way to do it out. Those jobs aren't there anymore. What is a child going to do in today's America and in today's world if they can't read?